Hey Ted here, I'm gonna take this lower unit off this uh, 60 horsepower EFI Merc. Uh, I think it's a 2014, 2013 model engine. I'm uh, gonna do a water pump change on it, so here we go. Okay, so I've broken some of these uh, bolts loose and they are uh, 5 eighths or 16 millimeter. The other bolt up here is 15 millimeter, so you need 15 millimeter socket and five, uh, 16 or 5 eighths. Here's a cool wrench. I picked one of these up a long time ago that works really well. It's uh, a, a snap on one that has an open end and you just kind of can almost ratchet with it. It's really cool. Now the owner says this lower unit hadn't been off yet, so we're going to find that out. Okay, we got it wiggling loose. A lot of sand, not a good sign. Got a lot of sand coming out of here. So, it's good we're gonna do a water pump on this thing, I think. There's nothing on these bolts, so my assumption is they're probably also. Okay. All right, so I got all the bolts out. Um, a lot of sand's coming out of here. And I've got the last bolt here, which is a stud. And I always leave that one uh, until I get these out so I can support the lower unit. One thing you don't want to do is fight with it and I'm slipping it up here and then suddenly realize it won't come down and you forget that there's one of these hidden bolts and make sure you don't forget to take those out. So we're gonna take this last one out. There's a washer with it. Let's see if it'll come down. There it comes. So it's a spline shaft the shift shaft and there we go and in the stand it goes pretty interesting got a wasp nest here so we had a lot of sand but this is a wasp nest this has been sitting in somebody's yard long enough for an old wasp nest to grow here so boat's been sitting around for a while. There's a plastic bushing in here. You want to make sure you don't lose that. A lot of sand. So this boat, this boat definitely was beached several times. Okay, so um, first thing I wanted to show you was this is a slinger. This is the piece that prevents sand from going down inside the impeller. And this is extremely dry rotted. And I don't know if you can see how deteriorated it is, but um, there's all kinds of debris wrapped around this. So this pump has not been changed in a long time. Um, I would be suspect that the impeller has probably got damaged. So let's go find out. So I would suspect it's 10 millimeters. And I am correct. And then... Since these haven't been apart, I'm just going to lightly I don't like the feel of that. So I'm going to get a ratchet. I don't want to break these bolts off of my housing. I don't think this has ever been apart, so let's go find out. Quarter inch ratchet. I can't put too much force on it. That one turns. That one turns. And that one turns. Not bad. This one's getting a little tighter. This one feels okay. There's always one. I think this one's gonna be okay. Yep, this 
one's gonna be all right. I think this one over here is gonna be okay. Yeah. So this one is tight on towards me. And this one's a little tight. So I'm gonna give you a little tip on how to break those loose without damaging it. So what I'm gonna do, I've broken it loose a touch. Um, Croil is a good one to use. I like PB Blaster, I've used this for, for years. I'm gonna put a little bit on this one and the other one over here. In fact, I'll just do all of them, just a, a little extra lubricant. And then what I wanna do is try and shock this bolt loose. So, for example, if this is the bolt, I'm gonna put a punch on here, brass punch, give it a couple wraps. This is the one. What I want to do is try and shock that bolt to get the lubricant in there. And then I'm going to try to tighten it back up a touch, which it worked. Another wrap. Use a good size hammer, don't use a baby hammer. It gets tight again. See if we get lucky with this one. I'm going to tighten it back down, snug it up, and loosen it up. Yep, coming right out now. So there's your little trick there, folks. Yep, and it got in there. So let's see what happens here. Amazing, not bad. Okay, so here's the key. You can see there's a tremendous amount of wear here though on this plate. This plate is devastated. Um, just this area where it's concaved in, there's a groove, a heavy groove in here will cause cavitation in this area at high speed and it can cause this pump to not pump water and cause you to overheat. So um, obviously a mercury impeller, um, still in pretty good shape. The housing as well is very, very scored. Um, I would not put these back together again, even if it was mine and it was Friday. Um, the housing is scored in here um, to the point where I can feel the groove, so that definitely is wiped out. All right, I got the water pump off. I got the new kit already. Uh, they had it local in stock. I'm gonna do a gear lube change while I'm at it too. So, two plugs, one says vent, one says level. So obviously when you're filling it up, you open the vent. When it gets to the level plug, that fluid gets to the uh, bottom of that level plug, you put the level plug in put the vent plug back in, and then put the base in. So we're just gonna crack the level plug out. Take that one out. And we'll drain it. I gotta take that vent plug out. So here again is that snap-on drain plug screw tool um, I did a short video on this. This one's SGD155C. It is an awesome tool for drain plugs. You can put a wrench on it too, but it's made just for us. It's nice and clean. Feel good about that. Okay, so while I'm draining the gear lube, I'm gonna get this pump ready and these bolts came out pretty hard. So we're gonna tap those holes out. 
Uh, the tap that you need for these bolts is a six millimeter by 1.00 millimeters per thread. All right, so here's a six millimeter tap. Here is a six millimeter six point socket, which fits it really nice. And I'm just gonna run these down. And what I like to do is another product I like a lot here is Super Lube. And it's basically a lubricant with um, PTFE in it. Just some silicone, um, just some Teflon. Give a little bit of lubricant just so I can back together okay so base gasket goes on new wear plate new gasket and the seal side goes down towards the plate and again if we just take our old plate and kind of look at it and make sure it lines up it's about right Okay, I have a new, whole new housing, brand new wear plate, new impeller, new key here. I'm gonna put a little grease on all of the threads of all the bolts too. And again, from my previous videos, we're going to take that impeller, slide that down over the shaft onto the key, hold the key, and make sure that you can't turn the impeller, and then you know you're lined up correctly. One last look, looks good. Put the housing down. While you're at it, check your splines, make sure your splines are straight, they're not bent. I've already done that, they're not twisted. A lot of times if somebody hits something, prop shafts twist or the drive shaft will twist as well. If they are wave jumping a lot and you've got a thinner shaft here than the prop shaft, this will twist. So look at that every time you take a lower off. So you don't want to get ready to put it together and suddenly realize the drive shaft splines are twisted because they're only going to break. Push down and turn it at the same time. Now if I have to, I can simply pick it up just a touch, don't lose the key and I can move my gaskets back into position and then when I'm ready and everything looks pretty good. At this point, you could start putting some bolts in just to keep things lined up too. Now you'll know right away because it's in neutral if you lost the key because you'd be able to turn the shaft back and forth freely. It has to be a neutral, so make sure you just reach down, grab your prop shaft splines, they go back and forth. If you can't turn this freely, then the key is in the impeller, you're all set. 60 inch pounds is the torque spec for these fasteners. Okay, good. Ready to put gear lube in it. 